Okay, so going to make a start with BLFS, but um, as I said in the introduction, there's um, some changes we need to make to allow us to effectively build beyond Linux from scratch um, by installing a few package and packages and tweaking a few things. Um, the first thing I am going to do, um, I wasn't going to show this, but I thought it might be useful, um, is the screen font at the moment is quite small because I'm on a full HD screen. Um, so what I'm going to do is show one way, there are several ways of uh, modifying the font to increase the size. The way I'm choosing is a bit more of a permanent method because it involves um, modifying the um, font in the kernel so it becomes embedded in the kernel. So it's a bit more of a permanent way. There may be some kernel command line options to override this but um, being as I'm just going to set it and forget it I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about that I'm just going to go in there and make the change and uh, just leave it as that and it, it will make it easier not only for myself but for the recordings for watching on a smaller screen the, the, making the fonts larger so what I'm going to do first of all is to log in as the root because that's obviously the only user we've got at the moment. Um, and first first thing I will do, um, I don't think I can actually pause it. I might see if I can get a screenshot when I um, process this video. But the um, when Grub initially boots, there's an error that appears, and it says error, no suitable video mode found, booting in blind mode. Now, to get rid of that error, what we can do is we can edit the um, grub config file and actually put an extra command in which tells grub to um, load all video drivers and that's what the error is about it's saying that it can't find all suitable video mode because make video mode because it doesn't know about the um, you know what video mode to use so what we can do we can do ins mod and it's a global thing so it doesn't matter what menu entry we use, we can type in insmod all, uh, I think it's underscore video, so if I save that I'll reboot and see if it just flashes up really quickly so I'm not sure if I will be able to capture it or not, I'm sure I won't be able to stop the, the boot at that point but um, I'll just keep an eye on the screen and make sure it doesn't appear So I've got the menu, so I press enter, and yeah, it hasn't appeared that message, so that is that is the right command. I wasn't sure if it was all hyphen video off the top of my head, but it is all underscore video, insmod all underscore video. So that's got rid of that message. It's harmless, but it's, it's worth not having errors or warnings like that. So now I'm going to change the... Um, font in the kernel which will make the console font a lot bigger um, which will be useful while we're in this console text um, text console um, as we're going to be in here for quite a number of hours working on uh, BLFS so I've logged in let's go to sources and the kernel as we left it so all I need to do is make menu config And what I now need to do is I need to go to um, library routines, I think it is this one, just one up from the bottom. And then I need to, yeah, there's an option again, one up from the bottom, select compiled in fonts. So I need to press spacebar or, or a Y to select that option. As you can see, it opens up many more options um, that become available and the font I'm going to use is two large ones general that's a really small font 4x6 is it's effectively the number of pixels across by the number of pixels down so a normal size VGA font is around about 8x16 I believe so something like that's approximately a VGA standard VGA size the 
because I think I've got a frame buffer installed, it's going to quite a small one, so it may be using something like this medium 6x10. Um, it could even be using that, but obviously on a smaller scale because it is a, a an HD screen. But I'm going to choose the biggest one. There's a there's a slightly larger one here, Spark, but I'm going to use this terminus one because it's quite a clean font. I think the this Spark console 12 by 22 looks a bit sort of like uh, Times Roman, as I remember. Uh, but the terminus one, I suppose, as indicated by its name, suggested by the name, it's it's a good one for a terminal font. It's quite a clean. Uh, font to use. So I'll just press spacebar or you can press Y for yes to select that. So I'll just press um, exit, select exit and just exit back to the main menu, select yes to save the configuration and then I'll just make with four jobs remake the kernel and normally the kernel, well it is intelligent enough to know which bits to build, it depends whether you've modified part of the kernel that affects many other parts of the kernel as to whether you have a big build or not but as you'll see this is a uh, just a tiny change it hasn't affected other parts of the kernels or many other parts so it's a very quick build so all I need to do now is to copy the um, uh, Linux image so that will be under x86 underscore 64 boot bz image and I want to copy that into boot and overwrite the existing image that's there and I want to do the same for the system map copy that into boot system map with the version number that's there and I'll do the same with the config file just to make sure I've got a backup of that So that's installed it. I shouldn't need to rerun the grub command or anything like that. Um, I will run the make modules install command just in case. Again, I shouldn't think I'd need to run that normally, but I'll do it anyway just in case. And now I'm going to do a reboot. And you'll see when it comes up that we'll get a different font. So there's the grub menu, nothing's changed there, but as soon as I press enter, you'll see we've got a much larger font now and it's a lot easier. Oh, okay. Why is that changed? Right, I know why. It's because um, we've, we're have we changing the font. Um, yeah, I forgot about this. We've, we're changing the font in the configuration as it boots up. So we need to edit the sysconfig etc sysconfig console configuration and it's this line here that's actually changing the um, the font back to how it was so this font is a font that exists as a file on the disk it's like what you call a user space font um, the font that I set in the kernel is a font that's built into the kernel there's several fonts as you saw that are available in the kernel but they're they're two separate entities, so what's in the kernel can't normally be seen by user space and vice versa, so that's why I haven't set it here, um, because I don't think that, that font is available that was there in, in on the directory, uh, sorry, on the uh, hard disk. So I'll just remark this out by putting a hash in front of it, save it, and I'll reboot, and this time we'll get the new font and it won't be reset. So just wait for this to reboot. And then once this has started up again, just press enter, we can have a start making a stab at um, getting the uh, GPM program, which is for the mouse functionality and links program which is to let us get access to the internet for downloading packages from uh, various sources. So I can log in as root 
and one thing to notice here i'm not going to be doing anything as a normal user yet there, there is no normal user at the moment um i can prove that i suppose by showing you the home directory um so there's nothing in there uh, i can cat the groups file uh, you see there's no, no, normally the users on a Linux from scratch system are, are numbered a thousand onwards and the highest number there is users with uh, a users group with 999. Um, so there's no, well at least there's no user that's been created that has its own group. Um, so you can see, and, and that's how it was at the end of Linux from scratch. We just built the system as root at the end and it was just left like that. Now normally one of the first things I would do is create a um, uh, a normal user for normal everyday use um, but because of what we're doing where we're trying to get the system up and running as early on as possible um, to allow us to copy and paste stuff um, I'm deferring all of that, including a lot of the configura further configuration of the system because there, there's a lot of um, configuration files that would be a hell of a lot of typing to, uh, to to type in without you know copying and pasting. I'm deferring creating an, uh, an ordinary user until, until we've got this GPM and links installed. Therefore, we've got to be doubly careful of what we're doing because A, as I said before in the introduction, we can't copy and paste. Everything's got to be typed by hand at this this stage. So we've got to be careful what we type in. We may make a, a mistake that causes the um, uh, either the installation to fail or the command to fail, or we may get a command that works and it, we've done we've made a typo that causes the command to behave in a different way than what we expected. So that's one reason why we've got to be very careful. Second reason we've got to be very careful is because we are roots. We can do damage to the system if we're not careful um, because we've just basically got access to all parts of the system. As an ordinary user, we wouldn't have right access to the system files. So that would mean that if we accidentally did type something like rm forward slash user forward slash star that we wouldn't accidentally delete the user everything in the user directory because it wouldn't wouldn't allow us to because the the user wouldn't have a high enough privilege but obviously as a root user we can do anything it's super user it's called that for a reason you can you can do everything you have all the power at your fingertips so that's the second reason we've got to be really careful about what we type in so first things first um i suppose i guess it doesn't really matter which we install first because um, if we installed the mouse um, driver, or sorry, the mouse daemon GPM, we haven't really got anything to copy from. Um, if we install the browser, I suppose arguably we could read the browser and copy what we see with our eyes and type it in with our fingers. Um, so arguably you could type in links first. Um, uh, sorry, compile links first and then follow that by a GPM, but um, really it doesn't matter. At this point, I, I should say that to go any further, um, it probably would be a good idea if you had some sort of access to the pages that we're about to um, go through so that you could refer to them yourself. Um, these videos, I'm assuming that it's just been one machine with Windows on it and we've turned that machine into a machine that can boot Windows and Linux from scratch and that you have no other access to any other machine uh, to, to allow you to do anything further with Linux from scratch which is why I'm taking this route of just sitting here with what with the one console for Linux from scratch normally I would go on another machine and access the machine that I'm building up remotely over um, an SSH connection but I'm taking the assumption that this is the only machine we've got in this case so this is why I'm going to these pains to do this what seems to be a bit of a long-winded way a bit of an awkward and difficult way of doing things but that's the reason why I'm doing it so as I say I'd, I'd, before you come here go into Windows setup go into the Beyond Linux from Scratch um, website and just print off these first few pages that we're going to go through so that'll be GPM 
links and as you'll find there's a couple more that um, you'll probably want to print off um, what I'm going to do I'm going to cheat slightly I'm going to have an overlay here with a browser so I've got the web page here um, and this is the actual PC in the background that I'm building on um, so it it's just to enable I've done this just to enable um, you to be able to see what I'm doing um, and to tie in the commands that I'm typing in. I'm not just typing in blindly or I'm not reading off a bit of paper that's in front of me that you can't see. You will be able to see what I'm reading is, is off the screen. So it, it makes it a bit easier for you if you are following through with this. I've just got to remember which keyboard to type in because I've got obviously two keyboards in front of me. One for the machine that I'm building on and one for the machine that's got the browser on. So as you see, I've started at the um, Beyond Linux from Scratch uh, homepage, which you can get from the linuxfromscratch.org webpage quite easily. And I'm going to click on Read Online to get the book up. And you'll notice just like the Linux from Scratch webpage, there's a latest version of the book, the current stable version, which is 9.1. So that, that tallies up with the latest version of Linux from Scratch we built. Um, there's an errata page for the current version and there's also a development page as well but that's that's kept bang up to date and could could have changes in there that might break the build so I won't be following that. Um, if you're preferring to use the system D version which I won't be doing I'm going to be using the system V. If you prefer system D then obviously you need to link uh, click on these links down here. Now the errata already, I mean, we're near the end of April, so it's just under two months, and already there's um, a few changes to the um, book, um, a few um, erratums. So um, we need to keep in mind of these when we go through that if we do get an error with something or, or to preempt and come here and just check the package that we're building to see that there isn't an, an error that exists and what to do to fix it. So for example, um, the machine I've got has got an Intel um, chip on it, obviously because it's, it's an Intel CPU, an Intel video chip. So this is a problem if I do check the MD5 sum. We're likely to be installing Cairo, so again that's a problem. Um, may install KDN Live, I don't know probably been installing CMonkey and so on so these things have got to bear in mind here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep this tab nearby and uh, refer back to it every now and then if I think there's something on here we should be looking at. There's also a section here with security vulnerabilities so obviously there's new releases being made of the packages that we're installing. Um, if you're going to be using this system we're building up as a uh, working system I would strongly suggest that you follow the instructions mentioned here and this will be updated quite regularly I would have thought so what today I might decide to install PHP 7.4.4 tomorrow it might be updated with the a more recent version of PHP 7.4.4 um, so it's worth coming here also to check to see if there's a newer version that you can install I won't be doing this because I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes but as I say if, if you're doing it for demonstration then you don't need, really need to either but if if you um, are planning on keeping the BLFS that you're going to build and using it um, in day-to-day -day life then I would strongly recommend that you do check these vulnerability updates and generally these updates come as it says here from the development version of the book so they are cutting edge, they may break, but um, unlikely, unlikely to. I think the fact that it's, you're fixing a security issue is more important than potentially breaking something. Um, so yeah, so keep that at the side. 